We're attending a press conference down at the Douglas Railway Station. It's all to do with this money being spent, or proposed money to be spent, on a locomotive, a diesel one. And uh, the man who's got to sell it to uh, Tim Ward, you have to be the salesman really on this one, is how are you going to convince your colleagues that in these times of cutbacks and, and spending reviews that this money is still needed? But it is less, let's start with that one. It's less than what you first went for. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, we had a briefing yesterday to Tim Ward members, which probably two thirds of the members turned up. Uh, and we explained you know, what we were going to do. You'll be aware that originally um, people were aware that we were going to look for a, a brand new diesel locomotive. Uh, I've asked the, you know, the senior officers to go out and look again and we've come back and we found a second-hand locomotive which can be adapted and will suit, our, will suit the job that we need to do. I mean, the press briefing was very convincing. I'm sure that's what you, you did, the same thing came out with your members. But obviously you've still got to find some money to spend on what people don't necessarily believe is necessary. Yeah, the money was put in the pink book in 2002, so it's been there for about 10 years now, and that was £750,000. Um, we're now coming back and looking for £350,000, and you know, we provide a service here not only for the locals, but we're also providing holidays which are being um, advertised abroad, and this year we've got over 20 groups of 40 people coming here for their railway holidays, and we need to be able to make sure that we can provide those. But again, it's public perception when money's being cut back that you want to spend money on this. How are you going to make that case? As we said to Timor members yesterday, I mean, our figures are actually up quite a lot. And you've just heard, you know, uh, the steam locomotive uh, railway holidays uh, are up by 23% over the last two years. The Manx Electric Railway is up by 28 or 29 percent over the same period, um, and the buses as well. If you want to put the buses in, you know, the picture, everything is moving in the right direction, if I can put it that way. Um, but it is a good news story at the moment. Um, yes, it's emotive because we need to spend money on what people see as what we don't. We don't really need it, but we do need it, to, you know, to provide a safe, uh, satisfactory service. So, what's the feeling in the house? Do you think you'll get this one through the nod? Mem you never take anything for granted and you know, members were very happy yesterday having heard the briefing from Mr Longworth and Mr Maddox. Um, we'll have to see next in July when I take it to Timwell but uh, you know, they were certainly happier yesterday when they had a better understanding of what we were trying to do and why we were trying to do it. I suppose a lot of people were thinking well, why did you just go for this cheaper option in the first place? Were you looking for Rolls-Royce at the time when you, know, you knew you, in those days money was a wash? No, it certainly wasn't Rolls-Royce, it was new, um, and that would still be the preferred option because it would have a 50-year life expectancy, and at the end of the day, if there were problems, it would have been made in the UK, and if there were problems, we could have got them over here to sort it. Uh, as it is, it'll be a second hand that's been refurbished, um, and we'll probably have to make do with that. Hopefully, we'll, you know, we'll be happy to make do with that, but uh, you know, if there's any problems with it, we'll have to sort it ourselves. But it will be fit for purpose? We won't be hearing about this breakdown in every few minutes once it's arrived? No, it's got to be fit for purpose. It's got to be able to do the job. So it will be safe. It will be you know, ready to go. It will be new engine, new gearbox and things like that. So it will be fit for purpose and it will be more than capable of doing what we need to do. Well, I started this by saying you're a salesman and you are going to have to pitch for this at an end day when, when the resources are limited. Do you believe you're going to get this through the nod? On the nod, definitely not. No, we've, we've got to work hard to do this and you know, the staff and the officers are working hard all the time. You know, Individual members keep asking questions, and, that, and if I can't answer them, I, I refer them back to the chief executive or Mr. Uh, Mr. Longworth. But you know, you take nothing for granted here, you know, and it will be a struggle right up to the end. And I know members are getting constituents, you know, saying, "Why are they doing this?" But you know, we know it's necessary to provide the service we do. Yeah.